This is a Razor 3 3D printed fully autonomous UAV. It's built uh, from completely off the shelf hardware, so the brains of the unit is a cell phone, two batteries, and an electric ducted fan. Our first launch was a car launch. We uh, lifted off out of the sunroof of my car at about 25 miles an hour. The second launch, we moved to a bungee cord and uh, launched it off the ground. And we've just gotten to the point where we're hand launching. It was designed to be hand launchable. That's like been one of the major constraints all the way from the very beginning. It's gonna take a leap of faith when we finally do it. Taking a beating though. Yeah. I teach a few courses here at the university on jet engine design and manufacturing where we actually design and build a jet engine and 3D print it. The first year I did this, one of my students took a video with a cell phone and that night put it on YouTube. Some folks at MITRE happened to see that video. They were looking around for someone that could help them to design and build a fully autonomous 3D printed airplane. And we started out with a somewhat conventional airplane just to prove that you could 3D print something that would fly. And we've moved on to our Razor here. It's a flying wing configuration and it flies up to and over 100 miles an hour, but it really finds its sweet spot around 40 miles an hour. Because of the autonomous nature of the plane, we needed to be able to do onboard calculations. And MITRE has been working with this technology package where you have a cell phone, an Android cell phone, that's actually the brains of your electronic operations. What this allows us to do is to kind of hijack the processor and the memory of the phone. We use the camera and you can use 3G LTE connectivity in the cellular network. This aircraft is really designed around 3D printing, but what it's trying to showcase is what's generally referred to as rapid prototyping. We have full control of the design. We design it on a CAD program. We can change and modify the models any way that we choose, and we can do it very quickly. We decided that it would be pretty much impossible to hand launch with our original motor just because it wasn't putting out enough thrust. What it came down to was a lot of iterations of printing to try to get the tolerances and clearances just right. The problems you solve on, on real world problems like this are not like textbook problems where you know the answer's in the back of the book and you just have to try to get that answer. A lot of times you don't really know what the problem is. The solution is very nebulous. Uh, you have to figure that out yourself. So every one of those solutions is your own and uh, you feel pretty proud about it. You get a thrill out of it when you see it actually flying and realize that all those little steps, every decision you made along the way really ended up being the right choice. Woo! Go ahead and fly it if you want.